let me uh, congratulate uh, all of you on your nominations. I'm pleased that we're considering nominations for critical posts, including some of our key European allies and partners. Uh, over the past few months, we have been reminded of just how critical the transatlantic alliance and relationship is and the importance of strengthening partnerships with those who share our commitment to fundamental democratic values. Uh, that unity remains paramount as we work to provide Ukraine everything that it needs to counter Russia's brutal and unprovoked war. Every country has a part to play. I just met with a whole slew of parliamentarians from Europe. Uh, and we need ambassadors in place to support uh, these efforts, strengthen ties, and maintain that unity. So I personally look forward to advancing your nominations as quickly as possible, uh, assuming I get the right answers. Uh, so let me, let me uh, start off uh, with uh, Ambassador Hartley. Uh, it's good to see you uh, again. Uh, I'm a believer in our special relationship with the United Kingdom. And I'm deeply grateful for the United Kingdom's efforts to support Ukraine and stand up for democracy across the globe. However, the United States also has an important role to play as a guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement, protecting peace uh, on the island of Ireland. Uh, I want to ask you, will you commit to using your voice uh, to protect and push for the full implementation of the Good Friday Agreement, including through measures like a Bill of Rights for Northern Ireland the Irish Language Act, and the establishment of a civic forum? Yes, Senator, I will. Uh, Senator Kane had asked me that question previously. Okay. And um, I think this administration and this president has made it very clear um, that the Good Friday Belfast Agreement has been critically important to Northern Ireland in bringing peace, stability, and economic stability as well. Um, and that we have to make sure that nothing ever happens to jeopardize that. I did also say, because T Senator Kane brought up the elections that are happening later this week, that I think the executive and the power sharing agreement that's uh, been happening in Stormont is also very, very important to progress in Northern Ireland. So I, I, I would absolutely uh, make sure both parties are communicating with each other, and I commit to you, yes, that I will. Thank you. I didn't really want to be redundant. I was I was not uh, being able to view the hearing while I was with these parliamentarians, but I'm glad to hear your answer. Um, this is the same points I pressed with uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson when he was here visiting with us mm -hmm. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. One other question on Ireland. Uh, the British government has reportedly been considering proposals to include a statute of limitations for all prosecutions during the Troubles up to April of 1998, as well as the creation of an information recovery body. I'm a firm believer that there can be no peace in Ireland without justice, and I'm concerned that new bodies floated in the government command paper would be less effective than those that were agreed to in the Stormont House Agreement, which was actually a British document uh, that ultimately got agreed to. So will you commit to standing up for the rights of those in Northern Ireland to seek accountability for trouble, errors, crimes, and to advocate for the full implementation of the Stormont House Agreement? Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, let me uh, turn uh, to, um, now Ms. Milstein, uh, I, I caught the tail end of uh, uh, Senator Barrasso's uh, uh, concerns, um, and my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you were a volunteer in the Gore campaign in, in 2000, that's 22 years ago, by the way, uh, and uh, the question uh, was about, in the process of giving rides to voters, uh, whether you offered them some cigarettes. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, the Milwaukee district attorney investigated, found no wrongdoing or evidence uh, that uh, cigarettes were provided in exchange for votes. So if that is the case, uh, I can assure you that uh, we have had nominees here, especially from the previous administration, nominees who were clearly under investigation by the IRS presently, uh, who ultimately got indicted and members of this committee voted for that individual. So 22 years ago, for something that the Milwaukee District Attorney said was no violation of criminal law is uh, something I, uh, I don't quite understand being an, a, an impediment 
uh, to moving forward in your nomination, but I look forward to your response to Senator Barrasso uh, in, uh, in your written response. Uh, I do have a concern uh, about money laundering uh, as it relates to Malta. Uh, the Financial Action Task Force has assessed that Malta needs to do more to support law enforcement efforts to address money laundering. Uh, as, you, as we work to expose and rid our systems of malign foreign and oligarchic influence, uh, will you work with Malta to promote greater transparency in its financial systems? Thank you for that question, Senator Menendez. Um, I, it would be a, a great um, honor for me, and I look forward to working with Malta to try to get them removed from the jurisdictions uh, which are under scrutiny and uh, by, by FATF. Right. This well. is an international body, as well you know, and the United States has always given more credit than it, than it really has uh, in terms of turning things around. But I'm happy to report to you that the Prime Minister is working uh, to do what he can to get Malta removed from that list as well. All right, and then uh, Mr. Leventhal, uh, Denmark has announced plans to boost gas output in an effort to become energy self-sufficient and bolster European energy security. Uh, how large of a role do you think Denmark can play in helping wean Europe off of Russian fossil fuels? And is there a role for the United States in supporting Denmark's efforts? Uh, uh, as I'm sure you are aware, Senator, Denmark has played a leading role in climate change and leading in, uh, in moving from a fossil fuel economy. They lead uh, uh, in windmill production across the, across the world, about 25% of production. So I think Denmark has an important role to play. I, I hope we will help them.